Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to Lesson 5 of the Introduction to AI. In this video, we'll be implementing a finite state machine. In particular, we'll begin by implementing three unique states that our AI can be in. In the following video, we'll implement the transitions between these states. That said, fire up your editor and let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to the editor. And in today's video, we are going to set up our finite state machine. We've left off where we set up for the ability to have our enemy constantly chase our friendly unit there, or friendly pawn. So, what we need to do to set up our finite state machine is declare our states. Now, there are a few ways we can do this. We can either use an integer and just use a switch on the integer, or we can use a more visually friendly, or at least readable sort of way of doing this, and use an enum. So we're gonna use an enum. I'm just gonna go back, back up to my blueprints folder, add a new folder called enums, and very quickly, just make sure that's added to my source control for some reason, even though it was earlier. And in here, I'm gonna create a new enumeration, and that will be e, AI state and in here I'm going to declare the state my AI needs to be in I'm not sure why it's not automatically marking those for inclusion So by the way, if you're not using source control, don't worry about that We are gonna have three finite states and those three finite states will be find Target or you can name it find friendly since the unit is named friendly or the pawns named friendly chase and retreat. So before we consider what the conditions to switch between them, let's actually get these three states to work and then we'll consider how we switch between the states. So go to your AI, go to your AI enemy controller, and in here we have the setup you already need to go forward, except for one thing. We need to create a new variable here and this will be our AI state. That should be a capital I there. Let me just fix that real quick. And AI state will be of our new enum. So E AI state. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break everything we currently have from our event tick and from our event begin play. Grab all the nodes. We're not gonna delete them. We are actually going to reuse them in just a moment. Just move them out of the way for a second go back to your event tick. And what we're gonna do on our event tick is we are going to get our AI state. We are going to pull off of it and we're gonna do a switch. All right, plug that switch into there. And next, grab all those nodes we just moved and bring them back down to the switch. And the first state we're gonna be in will have been what was our event begin play. So that'll be our find our target branch or find friendly, depending on how you named it. And the second branch will be our chase. And we're gonna plug our current delay into there. We're gonna change some things up, however, to make this work correctly. So first thing is we don't want this to happen right away. We don't want them to find the enemy or the target the instant the game starts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in another condition. So we're gonna move this branch down and to mimic senses. And yes, I do know there is a component senses, but again, we're exploring the concepts and logic you need to think about with the AI. We will actually use the sense component later on. We are going to uh, put a second and condition in here or a singular and condition, and a second boolean we need to check. And that value will be the distance from the unit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off this reroute here, and we are going to get horizontal distance two. The other actor will be the pawn that this controller is in control of. So we're gonna search for our get controlled pawn. Now we want to know 
is this a certain distance away? And I'm going to say, is it less than 500 units? So I'm going to use float less than 500 units. If so, then we want it to count as being close enough to see it and thus target it. Now I'm going to take these three nodes because we're going to reuse them elsewhere. And I'm going to collapse them down to a function that I will name get if target is in range. This will be a pure function. This will be not self2, but target. And this will be b is in range. All right. So if they're within a certain range, then they will target the unit. Now, the next thing I need to do, and this isn't actually going to be how we switch between our conditions, but I need to make sure that once they are targeted, that the chase branch works. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pull the AI state and I'm going to place it here as a setter and I'm just going to make it chase. All right, so with that set, this should work right away. So let's test this out. First thing we're going to do, however, is set the unit. We're going to set this so we know they'll quickly hit each other. So move the enemy unit forward. If you have the same setup I do, move that one back or to the behind it. That way it will move forward and eventually be within that distance. And there we go. We see it's now chasing it. So we know that's working, but we also need a way to go back out of our chase and make our chase a little bit more realistic. So what we're going to do is we are going to say if the unit is no longer in range, that's 500 uh, units, then we will not chase them any longer because they're out of sight. That way we're replicating what we did for detecting the units. We'll put a branch in. Off the true, we'll continue on to what we were doing before. So if they're in range, we'll see them. And let's grab our get if target is in range and plug that return value into our condition. And we'll just move this a bit closer. Don't worry about this being entirely neat right now because we're going to do something with it in a moment. All right, and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go off of this false here and we are going to clear our pawn reference and return to our initial state. So we are actually handling some of the conditional switches, I realize. This one actually will stay in. We'll change it up a bit, so it'll be fine target. All right, now let's test this. So this is the first step in getting this to work. And this should work for the most part. I thought he lost him there for a moment. Let me check something real quick. Ooh, so get if target is in range, we're having a bit of an issue. I forgot to put in what our target is. So this was automatically just going to return true anyway. And that is our, that right there. We're also going to change this back to have a little bit of a longer delay so that we can see that in effect. There we go. So if you had that mistake, uh, sorry about that. And we can see the unit is still following, but now it's gone a bit haywire in that it doesn't know where the unit is, so it's searching for it. So it lost range, and now it's searching. But it's just standing there. All right, so this error I actually expected. What happened was, if you think about this, is we've cleared this target, but it still, because it's on a tick, was waiting for this delay to finish and tried to move somewhere. So that final movement it did, it didn't have a target. So it just went to the towards the center of the map. Sometimes they'll go to other locations. So we're going to resolve that issue right now. And that we're going to do for that is on our event begin play, we are going to set a new vector. And that'll be our start location. And that's going to be of type vector. So that way when it loses where the unit is, it will go back to where its patrol started or something else um, where it's just, you know, where it's based. That's what I mean by something else. Sorry about that. And what we're going to do to set this, so we're going to get controlled pawn. From our controlled pawn, we're going to get actor location. 
and we'll take that return value and set our start location to that. So if this changes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our unit go to that start location. But before we do that, we're gonna clean this up a bit so it's a little bit easier to handle. And we're also going to remove this bit here and plug that back in. Just move that up to the top for a moment. Grab all of these nodes on that loop, including the get all actors, and we're gonna collapse this down to a function which will be called find target. Let's go into our find target. And in here, we're just gonna move again these nodes a bit. We're gonna go off our complete and do a return node there. And I'm gonna pop open get if targets in range, cause I'm gonna change this up a bit. I think 500 for once you already notice somebody and are chasing them is a bit small of a number. So we're gonna take this 500, plug it into get if targets in range, and just put a few reroutes in to make this a bit easier to read. And this will be our range. All right, go back to the find target, set that to 500 there and then back to the event graph. In our event graph, once we have completed the finding our target, grab that enum set, but don't plug it directly into there. We want to do one check. We want to know, is this friendly pawn actually valid? In case it isn't, then we aren't gonna do anything. So is valid with the question mark. And we're gonna plug that into, or sorry, plug our AI state setter into the is valid. Next, let's go down to our chase branch and we're gonna create a new function here as well. And that will be based on these nodes down here and our move to location. And this will be our chase friendly function or chase target function, sorry. I named it friendly in my test file. So chase target. We are going to break this for a moment though. And what we are going to do is we are going to put the same is valid check down here. Because remember, if we cleared it here, this might still be going off. So we're gonna do that. And then if it is valid, we will chase our target. Now, we're gonna make one more function. We'll do it out here and then collapse it. This will be at the end of this false and on our is not valid. And that will be return home. So all we're gonna do is get our start location and then we'll do a move to location. The destination will be start location. Just take these two nodes after you plug one into the execute there and collapse down to function, return home. The reason why we're using a function is we're gonna use this in a few places, so it's just good to have it ready. And we wanna return node there. All right, so as I said, we're gonna have that on the is not valid as well. If it's already at its home, it's not gonna move anywhere, so it doesn't matter too much. All right, that takes care of cleaning up this branch. Now let's make sure that that error has been properly resolved, but before we do that, let's not make the same mistake I made earlier. Funny part is I made the same mistake in prepping this. Let's actually set our value here to 750. All right, let's hit play. And let's see if this works. Oh, yeah, that's Chase still. Let's see if this works. So the unit comes up behind. It's seen. It's being chased. And there we go. Let's wait until the unit then loses track of each other. Oh, he actually caught up to him. I'm surprised by that one. So this might take a moment. And if it does for you, that's fine. We're gonna, let's see if I can help that unit out by blocking a bit. Oh, there he goes. All right, he lost the range there because I was blocking him. He is now running back home. So that's where he started. When the unit comes back up, he should be engaging in chase again, assuming the unit moves the correct direction for this test. That was not useful, unit. Or pawn. I'm gonna stand in front of you and try to change your direction too. Pick a new way to go. Come on. All right, it should automatically work. If it doesn't, then this should be resolved by the end. I do know on my test file at this stage, it was working. So let's go on to the next step. We need to set up our retreat branch. So I'm just gonna move this around so I have a bit of room to play with. 
That was not what I meant to do there. And our retreat branch is going to be fairly simple. And just so we automatically trigger it, we're going to change that to retreat once it's on target. We are going to simply set a delay. Actually, we'll just copy this delay over. And we are going to duplicate our chase branch and make some changes to it. So we'll duplicate. This will be our retreat. And technically, we should have a return node in both of these, but we don't in the chase, I bet, because we didn't in this one. Oops, not return home. Return node. All right, so we want the unit to move away from our target unit as much as possible. We're going to make it look like he's slightly, you know, afraid of the unit. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to break that there. And we are going to multiply this by minus one. So it should move roughly or face away from the unit and move roughly in the opposite direction. And to help make that work, we need to add something into here. So we're going to get a random float in range. And this random float will be between 0 and 500. We will make a vector. And we'll plug that into there. And then we will plug our return value into there. Now, an alternative approach you can use is you could take away this uh, times negative here. And what you could do instead is get controlled pawn, get actor forward vector. And then you could divide, and actually this is on the wrong side. You could divide this forward vector, so float by float, by that forward vector and plug the result into here. It would achieve a very similar effect as to using this negative one. I will leave this on screen for anyone who wants to duplicate that approach or who has access from Patreon to this file. So the unit should run away. Now, before we go further, we need to actually set this in our event graph. So in your event graph, grab your retreat and plug it into there. Hit play. And then we're going to watch a unit come up behind him. And there you go. Well, he did not turn around completely, but he did run away. And he continues to kind of run away. All right. So that takes us through setting up the three states of our AI controller for our enemy. And the next video will handle transitions and cleaning up the state so it's a little bit more coherent in what it's doing. The transitions bit will require a bit of math and understanding uh, some of the probabilities I'm going to use, so I think we'll spend a fair amount of time just taking a look at that and cleaning this up. All right, that said, this topic was brought to you by my Patreon supporters who wanted to learn about AIs. If you want to help support this channel, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. Not only can you get access to the project files, either in progress or completed, depending on the tier you subscribe at, you also will have a chance to vote on future content. All of that said, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, if you've learned something, hit that like button down below. And if you want to be here when we set up our transition between our AI states and when we clean up to make it a bit more coherent and realistic, hit that subscribe and notify icon so you know when that video is out. And as always... I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.